So you join me today in Shaoxing, in Zhejiang province here in China, and we're here to do something very special. So just a few weeks ago, we were driving the cheapest EV in China, the Wuling Mini EV. Today, we're taking it up just a notch. We're here to try the most expensive and the fastest EV ever built. And it's just here right behind me. We're going to find out, is this the new EV generation's poster car? Well, let's find out. This is the Neo EP9 and this is fully charged. So to give this car a little bit of context, this was actually the halo car from Neo before they launched any of their other uh, SUVs or cars. It's actually about four or five years old, but it still looks stunning. Now EP9 stands for Electric Prototype 9, and they're not actually road legal. You can buy them for about $1.2 million, but you can only use them on the circuit. Interestingly, the carbon fiber tub and a lot of the components in this car was actually developed by a team in the UK. Now, I'm gonna give you a bit of a walk around of this car uh, right now because when I'm driving this, it's highly unlikely I'm gonna be able to speak, concentrate or focus on speaking to you guys and driving this absolute beast. So let's talk about some of the features of this car. Now, the first thing you'll notice it is, is wrapped in carbon fiber. I don't mean literally wrapped, it's made from carbon fiber. All of this skirting down here, the bonnet, there's a lot of carbon fiber on this car. Now you'll see in the design language of this car, it was actually used in their subsequent uh, SUVs, the ES8, the ES6 and the EC6. So it's a design language which has been carried over for the past kind of five years. Interestingly, this car was actually developed from the inside out. So they designed the carbon fiber uh, tub on the inside and then they designed the car around it. So it was uh, function over form. As you can see, this is the interior of the car and this is the carbon fiber monocoque. It actually only weighs 165 kilograms, which is remarkably light and it has to be to try and keep the weight of this car down. Now, like I said before, the seats are in a fixed position. You can't adjust them at all. I think you can adjust the pedal box. The uh, actual controls up here are very, very simple. You've got one screen in front of you and then you've got another screen to the side. That will show your G uh, and it can also show your heart rate. So you can plug in some wearables uh, and it will display your heart rate, which is probably gonna be a ridiculous number. Steering wheel is very low. It's just like a racing steering wheel. You've got a few buttons on there uh, as well. And it has Goldwyn doors, which are amazing. I love Goldwyn doors. This has them. What a cool looking car. Now, the batteries in this, there's two batteries and they're both in the side pods. So there's one battery in here and one battery on the other side. They're about 317 kilograms each and you can battery swap this. So in eight minutes, you can take these out, replace them and then go back out on the track again. It does have a range of 265 kilometers. I don't know if that's WS, uh, WLTP or NEDC. Um, we just don't know. And it doesn't really matter because it's never going to be driven on the road. So but if you are taking this on track days, the fact you can swap those out, replace them and go again is very, very useful. So one part of this car I want to talk to you about is the wheels. So these are the 19 inch wheels. These are actually the racing wheels. It has got 21 inch wheels, which are the show wheels. Um, but these are the, the, the real ones that we're gonna dr be driving on today. It's got slick tires on, it's raining. I hope they change those for later. Um, but the interesting thing is behind these is carbon ceramic brakes. So you need those to stop this car. It's obviously a little bit heavy. Um, so you need really good stopping power. So again, you're gonna get to that three point, I think it's 3.3 G in stopping power, which is gonna probably tear my face off. Now, this also has four electric motors. So, you know, one um, almost at every corner driving this car, the 1,360 horsepower, you need that. Eco mode, we're not probably gonna get all of those horses out, um, but it's there if we, should we need it. The other thing I wanna to talk to you about is behind here. So they've actually taken the back off um, and you can see the active uh, dampers and suspension in here. Obviously lots of carbon fiber, but this does 200 calculations per second to keep the car flat on the road so it's not wobbling about too much. This is how it gets to those uh, record breaking speeds uh, around like the Nürburgring and this circuit uh, here today. One more thing I want to talk about is this massive rear wing. 
This produces twice the amount of downforce as an F1 car. That's good, because I'm going to be driving it in about an hour from now. So there's one more thing I want to tell you about this car, and that is the peak power output when this is going full chat. So I think today we're going to use it in eco mode. I don't have a racing license. I'm not a racing driver, and I don't really want to crash a 1.2 million pound or dollar car. So at peak power output, this puts out one megawatt of power. That's a thousand watts. I'm going to be on about the 300 watt eco mode, but to be honest, it only cuts about one or two seconds off your lap time. Um, I don't think there's much more to say. It's just, let's just jump inside and have a go. Right, so we're about to start. We've got the helmet on, got the race suit on. And we're about to get in and go for first a passenger ride. Second, I'm going to drive this. And I'm still terrified. I need the toilet again. <laughs> it's not good. Where are you come from? England. England, oh, okay, good. Yeah, but I live in Shanghai. <laughs> raw experience of being pushed hard into the seat, straining my neck muscles to keep looking out the windscreen whilst being orally assaulted by the roaring whine of the electric motors was an experience in itself. And then you look down at the speed you're doing and your mouth drops open. My focus was razor sharp in trying to control the speed on the circuit and gravity was trying to throw me around so it took every ounce of energy I had to turn the wheel and to stay on the circuit. For those who may lament the loss of raw sounds of an ice engine, listen to this. That's it, done. Oh, amazing, thank you. What an experience. That was the most visceral experience of my life. Um, first lap was terrifying. Second lap, kind of got used to controlling the car. But you are fighting, you're fighting G-force, you're fighting speed, you're fighting everything. But second lap, was, I was a lot more confident. I could go a lot faster in the corners, turn around them, much easier, I can't even get the words out of my uh, mouth at the moment. I'm gonna have to have a sit down, get my, get my thoughts back, and I'll join you again in just a minute. So I can breathe now, got my thoughts back, a bit less sweaty now. They've just swapped the batteries on this for uh, another round for um, someone else to go around. It's just started raining, so I'm glad we finished our, our fast laps before the track got too slippery. So is this the EV poster car for the next generation? 100% yes. It's like a jet fighter for the road. And anyone who says that ICE cars, they're gonna miss the sound and the experience and the thrill, need to drive one of these to really, I think, replicate that thrill, but even faster and with even more G. You know, I think this was an absolutely brilliant day. I'm so happy I got to do it. Childhood dream um, fulfilled. So unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today. Um, we've got lots of YouTube uh, membership, Patreon links on the outside of this video. I think if you have been, thank you for watching. <laughs>